And if you have practiced doing hard shit in other ways, you are going to handle the big things that happen in life like a badass. That is what's important. How you handle that. This is huge. And when you get faced with challenges, death, you know, adversity, just conflict, drama, all these things, you are going to be more equipped to handle it like a boss. What's up, everyone? If you're looking to be inspired, motivated, educated, and entertained, you have come to the right place. Welcome to the Bomb Mom Podcast, the podcast where we explore your fitness, life mindsets, and actions that help you become unstoppable. You're worth it, and it's time to finally make changes in your life that will last you the rest of your life. Hey everyone, welcome to the Bomb Mom Podcast. I am Melissa Vogel, your host. Welcome to the show. If you are brand new, welcome back. If you're a returning listener, I'm on fire today, you guys. You're only getting me. This is a solo episode. I'm gonna keep it short and I'm gonna keep it powerful. I just got back from the gym and I'm on fire right now. Two things either happen when I get home from the gym. (laughs) I'm either completely brain dead and I can't talk at all. (laughs) And I'm just like, Melissa, stay away from social media and the phone and texting because I used all my power at the gym or it's the exact opposite. And I'm just full of just, I don't know, fire and like just information. And I couldn't wait to get home today because today is a day where I'm feeling pretty empowered. I feel good about my workout. I feel good about just the path that I've taken this week. I'm like, I can't wait to get home and get on the mic because I want to share all of this information with you guys. As always... Make sure you rate and review this show. Give me five stars and write a review. It does amazing, amazing things for the show. And always to check the show notes because I'm going to put links in the show notes to our Bomb Mom Challenge. If we have any free boot camps coming up, how you can get involved and become a Bomb Mom and get all of this information and knowledge and training and coaching and accountability and motivation, everything every single day, if that's something that you're looking for. But never skip the show notes and it'll take you to my website too, Melissa Vogel Fitness and just a ton of information there. Mel's must-haves are on there. We send out an email every Monday day. It's called Mel's Must Have. And I'm always recommending like cool products to you guys and things that you can just get off of Amazon. Like I think next week we're sending out one on my favorite travel resistance bands. Make sure you're on the email list, but you know, all resistance bands are not equal. And I have a very specific bag and brand that I love. I actually put it in the giveaway basket that we did for the last free boot camp. So just things like that. Make sure you are on our newsletter. You can sign up on the website or just email me info at melissavogelfitness.com and be like, hey, put me on your newsletter. We will totally do that. I want you guys to always just check the show notes, get the information. I don't want you to miss anything at all. And we kind of recap too this episode. So as I'm giving tips and pointers and you're driving the car right now, like, oh man, I want to write that down. Because sometimes I do say something that's really cool and I'm like, shit, I got to write that down myself. So if I blast anything out there that spoke to you, (laughs) write it down or just check the show notes because we'll get that information out. We do have a bomb mom challenge coming up in June. I wanted to make sure I didn't forget to say that to you guys before I start like really going into our topics today. And it starts June, the first Monday of June. And I believe June 5th is the first Monday. Everyone has been asking, are you going to do one? Because it starts, you know, with summer and kids will be home and everything. And I'm like, yes, absolutely. Just like I did one over Christmas oh, you better believe we're doing one over summer too. I need the accountability. I will have my coaches in there. They will need the accountability too. Like we use our program for ourselves as well. And I want to help you guys adjust to that new schedule because right, it's a season change and kids will be home and, but we still have to work. We still have to do everything we're going to do. And now, and usually it falls on moms, we got to figure it out. So this challenge coming up in June, get signed up now because it will get full. And I want you guys to be placed in my private group. I want you to get the app. I want you to get the workouts that you can do all from home. Don't wait. So we're about the middle of May right now get into that June challenge. And if you're listening to this at a different time of the year, 
always, again, check the show notes because I bet I'll have another challenge coming up or a free boot camp. But for now, right now, present day, present time, get in. We have that challenge starting in June, June 5th, that first Monday of the month. (laughs) Oh no, maybe I am getting stupid after my workout. Maybe it's hitting me now. Oh no. All right, well, let's get through this episode because I want everyone to start just shifting their mindset. It's going, like I was saying, it's going to be a new time of the year, right? We have kids coming home, a lot of vacation, a lot of travel. Like there's going to be several weeks over the next several months that are just not our norm. It's not our typical. And if you can start putting a few things into place now and start practicing showing up for you in a different way now, you will take that into the summer months and you won't even skip a beat. And I hate saying this and I hate reminding people of this, but it's really important for everyone to just kind of know this and tuck away in the back of your brain. During the summer months, more people gain weight than they do over the holidays. It's insane, but if you think about it, it makes complete sense. And you would think, oh, we got less clothes on. I'm in a bathing suit. You know, we're outside. We have a little bit more fresh fruit available to us and fresh foods, you know, because the season, Uh uh-uh, we're drinking more. We're partying more. I live in a, like on a lake in a gated community. Oh my God. We're at the beach like every single weekend and everyone's partying and drinking and snacking. There's more barbecues and graduation parties and other things going on and a ton of summer birthdays, right? Start getting into the right place now. So then you already have some habits, some skills, some routine. You're feeling motivated. You made a little progress and progress creates more motivation. Get it done now. So then you take that in and you don't become a statistic. You don't become the person that, yep, Melissa was right. I gained more weight over the summer. So how can we do this, right? How can we start showing up for ourselves now in a different way? And it's going to seem really, really simple, but it takes awareness to get it done. And I want everyone to start practicing showing up in a different way. Now, what does this mean? Perfect example today. I had some available time this morning, full workload, like completely full workload and probably six hours worth of work to do. But I had a window in the morning and what's been happening lately is I get up, get kids to school, lunches, all that stuff, and then I go to work and I am working, working, working. I have my lunch. That's when I usually go to the gym, get that done, come back, work, and then usually I'm doing with kids and sports and all that. And what I'm finding that's happening is that I work longer because I don't have anyone that's like, Melissa, you got to take your lunch break right now, like get up and go. I'm working longer and it cuts into my workout and then the only person that's affecting and hurting is myself and I'm over it. I don't want to do that anymore. So today I'm like, I'm going to show up. I'm going to practice showing up for me in a totally different way. So I got the kids ready, went off to the gym, got them all settled. And I went to the gym, got my complete workout in, burned a ton of calories, which I love. I just love tracking. Remember, it's not necessarily about what the watch or the the Fitbit or whatever tracker you use says, but I was paying attention. I wanted to know. I wanted to hit certain goals and I moved through my workout really smooth, had a good warm up, and it felt so good. And I want to remind you guys of this. I just shared it on my Instagram too, but by the time this goes live, that'll be way gone because I just put it on stories. But I want to remind you guys of this because little things like this, little decisions like this, they add up. They do big time. And at some point, you have to take a stand. You have to have this moment in your life where you're like, you know what? Today's a hard stop. No more. I am going to show up for me today, even though it's not going to be the best workout or it's just a walk, right? And and it's not burning massive calories, but I'm stressed. I'm, I'm not going to do my norm. I'm going to put a hard stop in place and shift a few things around. It has to happen. You guys have to practice. Start showing up for you in a different way if you want to become someone different, right? If you're looking like in Bob Mom, you guys have heard me talk about this before. If you want to become your person B, right? That's what we call the person, like a better version of ourself that we're working towards. Like our future self is our role model and we're working towards to becoming her. You guys, that doesn't happen overnight. You have to practice. You have to show up every single day and practice being that person, It doesn't, and too many people think that it's just going to happen overnight. It doesn't. It doesn't happen that way. And I'm getting a little sick and tired. 
me putting me off. And I'm like, you know what? Who do I want to become? Who am I striving to be? And I want to be a better version of myself. I always have goals that I'm working towards. And I'm like, it's not going to happen. What would she do? What would your person be your future better self, Melissa? What would she do? Well, she'd tell work and everyone else to hold on, go to the gym, and then address everything. Yeah, she probably would. That's what I did. Find little ways where you can start just making small shifts. Maybe every single morning you wake up and maybe you're in the habit of making your kids lunches, right? And then you're like, oh, you know, I'll just throw an apple in there. I think I got some protein shake in the fridge and I'll just throw it in there or whatever. And that's going to be lunch and breakfast, you know, whatever. Maybe you stop and you're like, you know what? If I'm making them a lunch... I'm going to make myself a lunch today too. That's a hard stop, you guys. Even though it doesn't seem like that big of a deal, it truly is. It's just a little shift. And this weekend, you know, oh man, this is going on. We have to get up for this and that. Everyone else is scheduled in, but where are you scheduled in? Maybe this coming weekend, you take a look and say, you know what? Eight o'clock, I'm getting up and I'm going to go do three miles. And then I'm going to come home and I'm going to do a little bit of weights. Or maybe you have a gym membership that you haven't been using and you're thinking, you know what? I'm going to wake up and go to the gym. I'm going to act a little different this weekend to start practicing being that future self. That's what it's all about. That's what we want to see happen. And then you just get better at it and better. And before you know it, you have the identity shift. You start acting and feeling and talking and looking and thinking like a different person. And then other people start noticing it. And we've talked about this before. This identity shift is huge. If you want changes for the rest of your life, you have to have this shift in your whole identity. I have this bomb mom. She's going to know totally that I'm talking about her when she listens to this. And her and her husband are going away. Like they haven't done it in a really long time. And I can't remember they're going probably like Hawaii or something like that for like a week. And we were texting back and forth. She's actually, I hold like little accountability groups and she's in one of them. And we were talking about it and she shared with us and she's like, yeah, I already told him. I already let him know that I will be working out for a minimum an hour or 45 minutes, you know, every day that we're there. And I know she was like, yeah, I already had the conversation and whatever. And she said it so, you know, just nonchalant and whatever. And I'm like, dude, this is huge. You realize how big this is, right? Well, no. And I'm like, you're going on vacation. You've already had this crucial conversation. Like before you've even left, you're not even leaving for like another week or two. You've already set the expectations. You already told them what you're going to be doing. What, you know, like, hey, I need your support to make this happen. It's gotten in your blood, girl. Like, You are shifting. These are signs of an identity shift. All of it is huge. And he responded too, because she's been making these changes for a while. He was like, yeah, I I know. She said, he said something like, yeah, I know. I figured you probably would. Oh my God, this is such a win in so many ways. It's a win for their relationship. It's a win for her. It's a win for her fitness journey. Oh, it was just, there's so many wins, but we're just like, yeah, I already told him I'm going to work out and we just kind of blow it off. No, there is a lot there to be proud of. And she's like, I, I guess I didn't even think of it that way. And I'm like, I know that's why you have me to point this all out to you. But it was just such a cool conversation. And it was just proof that identity shifts do happen and they are powerful and they can literally change your life, but you have to practice. And showing up and going to the gym today, even though maybe that's not your norm, like I went today first or whatever, it's practice. It's practice and putting more time, energy, effort, and putting a rep into who I want to become. And, you know, this brings me to my other point that I wanted to hit on was doing this hard work, right? Like showing up, adjusting things, practicing, going to the gym, doing squats, you know, that don't feel good, pushing through the burn, breathing heavy, maybe even journaling, diving into things like all of these things and doing hard work, whether it's physical, mental, emotional, whatever, it really is preparing you for tomorrow. And maybe not necessarily like tomorrow, tomorrow, but your future. And why? Why, Melissa? Why do we need preparation for the future? Like, what what are you talking about? Well, let's face it. Life is going to happen, right? Death is a part of life. Someone we know is going to pass away, and it's going to be really hard. It's going to be really hard to get through. Disease, cancer, like 
hard shit of life is going to happen. You know, you're gonna have to replace all four tires on the car. Like it's not comparable to death. But when that happens, and you weren't expecting it, or something happens, you know, you're like, Oh, my God, like, not what I wanted. We call it like life plot twists plot twist, wasn't expecting that. It's life. It's going to happen. I feel like I've said that 8,000 times already, and I'm going to say 8,000 more times. We can't avoid it. But that's what makes the world go round. That's what makes life beautiful, right? How we deal with that, though, is like the deal breaker. And if you have practiced doing hard shit in other ways, you are going to handle the big things that happen in life like a badass. That is what's important. How you handle that. Hey, so I thought this would be a good time to give you guys a little bit more information on my online program, Busy to Bomb Fit Mom. If you are looking to be motivated, inspired, finally get off your butt and do the things that you want to do with your health and your fitness and your workout and your body and hit those goals, we need to talk. Busy to Bomb Fit Mom is a full online program. It's a 90 day program that's going to get you into the best shape of your life. Now, is it an easy diet plan to follow or all these amazing workouts that I'm just going to hand you on a silver platter? No, this program is going to love and support you. It's going to motivate you, get you heading in the right direction, but you don't have to do it alone. You're going to have an entire support system with you. You're going to have me as your coach, coaching you on nutrition, your workouts, I become your virtual personal trainer. So if this is something that you're looking for and you just need that extra push and someone on your heels telling you that you're worth it and it's time, we need to talk. Visit www.busy2bombfitmom.com. Book a call with me. Let's see if this is a fit for you. All right, back to the show. This is huge. And when you get faced with challenges, death, you know, adversity, just conflict, drama, all the things, you are going to be more equipped to handle it like a boss. Because you're going to be like, oh my God, yeah, you know what? I do hard things all the time. Melissa made me do this burpee challenge in April. We totally had to do a burpee challenge for bomb moms. That was really freaking hard, but I did it. So now I can face this. Maybe not perfectly, but you're going to handle it a lot better than you would have. I've had a lot of crazy just family stuff happening over the last couple of months, um, dealing with the health of my parents and very stressful, you know, especially since I'm in California and they're all the way in Michigan. It's been a lot mentally and emotionally, but I found myself sitting there going, okay, but we're going to separate facts from feelings, Melissa. We're going to really take a look at this. Okay. Breathe. Is this how I feel? Is this emotions? Is this other people's opinion about what's happening? Or is it fact? And I'm like, I can do this. I can deal with this. I can deal with this six hour flight from hell. I can get through this. I can figure it out. I can figure it out financially and emotionally because I have practiced doing other hard shit. You know what? This one time I freaking planked for eight minutes. That was hard. If I can do that, I can do this. But we're just setting ourselves up for a better future and to be able to handle all of the drama that comes our way. And I want everyone to just be aware of this because we're going through the season change, right? Things are going to get hard, complicated, difficult, but you're going to work through it. So just be aware. Be aware of like, okay, what did I do this week that was hard, that was tough? Like, how was I challenged? And then how did I overcome it? Don't think of all the stuff that you did that was like, this is really hard. I went home and I ate a bag of Oreos and I cried. Like, no, not the example that we're looking for, right? I'm looking for, did you do anything that was tough? How did you handle it? How did you overcome it? And how did you come out on top emotionally, mentally, or didn't you? Maybe that's a good opportunity to sit down and just kind of journal a little bit and be like, okay, this is what was thrown at me. This is how I handled it. I did not come out on top on this one. Even though the problem wasn't resolved, I could have felt better, you know, in the inside if I would have handled it differently. Reflection and becoming aware is so key. Like if you take anything from this podcast, know that just reflecting on what has happened throughout your week, throughout your day, And then taking action and becoming aware, it's so powerful, so powerful. Do a little reflection. Become aware of how you have made poor choices or good choices because this is going to help you in the future, especially if you next week, you know, looking at my next week, it's going to be hell. I have a jam-packed week next week and I have experience now. Okay, it's a hard week, but this week was hard and I am going to 
not do this because that didn't work. I'm going to shift and I'm going to adjust and I'm going to do this in place now. So just kind of looking at things, evaluating, bring it to the surface, super powerful, super huge. And it's practice at showing up for you in a totally different way. That's all I'm asking for is just to practice. I have a crazy story to, to share with you guys before I go, because it was a way I was totally challenged and I got to show up for myself. No one was there to save me. And it was great practice at proving to me, to myself on the inside, because now I can share the story with you guys. It's nothing big. It, it's funny. I shared it with my group the other day with Bomb Moms. And I got to show myself, like, you can do this. And then I actually shared the story with my daughter about what happened and, and everything. And it was, it was just great, but it was not fun going through it. So I had to have an MRI done the other day. I won't go into why, but it needed to be done. It has to be done. I've been putting it off. My doctor's like, no, we need to do this. And I'm like, okay. And before you get an MRI, you know, and this is like no big deal. Like, because people get MRIs all the time, right? <laughs> like they probably fit in like, I don't know, 60 people yesterday before me. I don't know. I was at the end of the list, but it's when I signed up for it, when I got scheduled for it, they call you, you know, I set it up and everything. They're like, are you claustrophobic? Yes. Cause I am. I don't like tight confined spaces at all. Are you claustrophobic? I sure am but I think I can, I can get through it. Okay. And then you get there and then they ask you again and then you're getting changed and stuff. And they ask you again and they're like, Hey, we saw your claustrophobic. Can you, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to be fine. I'm going to be fine. I just kept saying that like, I'm going to be fine. Cause I really thought I'm Melissa Vogel. I could talk myself through this. All a mindset. It's all a mindset. And I had an MRI done before, but it's been a long time ago. So I didn't really remember. And I don't really remember how I got through it, but I know I did. I must've been fine. I don't think my head went in. So I'm going in totally fine. I wasn't like totally staring at it, but I was like, whatever. And I lay down on the table and they give me the earplugs and they're like, it's going to be loud. And you're going to be like, okay, you know, you just got to be really still and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, you know, and I lay down and they give me that ball thing in my hand and they start putting me in. I'm like, hold on, wait a minute. And I close, close your eyes, go to your happy place. And I close my eyes and they start putting me in and I peek, you know, and I'm like, who wouldn't open their eyes a little bit, right? Like I can't keep my eyes shut like completely. And I see how tight and confined, like what a tight and confined space this is. And I'm like, oh shit. And I, I lost it. You guys, I lost it. And I'm like, wait, oh my God, get me out. And I start squeezing that ball. And I'm like, I can't do this. Oh my God. And I start sweating. I'm like, am I going to start crying right now? And it was this guy and the girl. And they're like, oh, you're okay. You know, we got you out. And I'm like, they're like, you can do this. You can do it. You know, cause I'm sure they're like, we have five more people right after you lady. Like, come on get it together and get in that tube. And I'm like, okay, I can do this, you know? And I'm like, I can do, and that's all I kept saying to myself was like, I can do this. I can do this. Like, you know, and my chest felt so heavy, total panic, total panic attack and anxiety. And then I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to start crying. I'm like, you are not going to (laughs) cry. And I'm like, you know, I can do this. I lay down and they start putting me in again freak out. Oh my God. And this time my hand came up, it hit the ceiling. and I'm like, Oh my God. And I keep thinking about David Goggins. I don't know if you guys have read his book. You can, you know, I've read both of them. I talk about them all the time. I've read them multiple times. And in, I think it's his first book, Can't Hurt Me. He talks about how he had to be in this box for, I don't know, some, you know, boot camp or whatever, and just training, being in tight, confined spaces. And a bee got in his, not part of the training. And he's like, I had to keep it together, you know, because then I I didn't want to turn into like the incredible hawk, you know, and just like bust through this box. And I had to like, I didn't want to lose my shit. And I'm like, that's all I could think about. I was like, oh my God, I'm in a box and like, I can't get out. And I'm going to just like freak out when they put me in there. And then I'm like, okay, so how far do I have to go in? She's like, oh, because I just kept thinking, well, if I know my waist is out, I'm going to be fine. And she's like, well, you're all the way in. Like your head's almost coming out the other end. I'm like, okay, I wish I wouldn't have asked that. And I'm like, how long is the test? And I'm asking all, I'm like trying to like barter, right? And I'm just like, just give me something to make me feel better. And I'm just like, oh my God. And I'm like, okay. They're like, well, you have other options if you can't. I'm like, what if I can't do this? And they're like, you have other options. Like, yeah, but I need this. I I really do have to get this done. And they're just kind of looking at me and I'm like, pull it together, Melissa. You do not want to walk out of here and go live because I go live all the time and bomb mom, you do not want to come out of here, go live and tell those women that like you couldn't get it together and you couldn't pull through to do this MRI. And that's what was going through my head. I was literally using my program as motivation. How like, oh my God, that sounds so stupid saying that out loud, but whatever, it got me through. I'm like, okay, so I started 
talking to myself. I have a mantra that I say all the time. I don't know if I created it. I don't know if it came from someone else, but it's, I am safe. I am secure. I am happy. I am loved. I am safe. I am secure. I am happy. I am loved. When I was dealing with a lot of morning depression and anxiety, that was like, boom, that's like what I said to myself every single morning. I'm safe. I am secure. I am happy. I am loved. And I said, do you have a towel or a washcloth? Why they didn't give me one in the first place, I don't know. It would have been super helpful. And knowing I was claustrophobic, they should have never like let me look at the machine. I should have walked in, laid down, towel on face. You're in a huge, you know, bubble, Melissa. Like nothing is right next to you. Huge bubble. That's what should have happened. So FYI, if you're listening to this and you're going to get an MRI and you're claustrophobic and you're worried... Those are the tips that you should do. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna offer that little suggestion to you. And they put the towel over my face so I couldn't see. Even if I opened my eyes and peeked and cheated, I couldn't see anything. I had the ball in my hand and they're like, here we go. And I started saying it. I am safe, I am secure, I am happy, and I'm loved. And my other two new favorite sayings is I do not struggle and I don't do overwhelmed. And then I'd be like, I'm safe, I'm secure, I am happy, I am loved. I do not struggle. I do not struggle. And I kept saying it to me and they got me in and then they got me in. And then finally I knew I was all the way in and it just dawned on me. Isn't that interesting? If I keep saying this and I keep my mind under control and I have words to support that, there was no room or space for the fear and anxiety to start creeping in. It was impossible. It couldn't happen. I had other things going. The door was shut. Nothing else could come in. I couldn't be calm and safe and secure and happy and loved and anxious and scared shitless at the same time. It couldn't happen at the same time. And then it would try, I'd think like a coffin or like being buried alive. Like it'd try to creep in. I'd be like, nope, I am safe. I am secure. I am happy. I am loved. And I just said over and over again. And I just kept thinking like, holy shit. If I keep my mindset in check and in the right place, and I have words and mantras to support that, I can do this. I'm unstoppable right now. These next 30 minutes are all mine. And holy crap, I could actually lay here and close my eyes and take a nap if I wanted to, if I get that calm. And it happened. And I realize how stupid this sounds because there's probably people listening going like, I've had like eight MRIs or, you know, yeah, I had one last week and it wasn't that bad. I don't deal well with confined spaces. And I realize how silly this sounds, but at the same time, it's kind of like a really great reminder of you can face anything. You can practice showing up, being a different person by just what you say and what you think and keeping that mind in check. If you keep that going, there is no room or a window or a crack or anything for something to come in and be like, what do you think you're doing? You can't do this. You can't lose weight. You can't get in shape. You what? What are you thinking? You can't afford this. There's no room for it to come in. And you figure it out. And you keep moving forward. That's how powerful the mind is. And yes, my silly, stupid MRI story is a great reminder of this. And I was successful through it. But I just, oh God, it was such an awakening moment. Meanwhile, I'm keeping it together, having these epiphanies of like, if I just keep saying this, I'm going to do good. I'm going to be fine. And then I got to a place where I didn't have to keep saying that. And I just was in my happy place. And I just kept thinking about my happy place and relaxing. And I almost started drifting off. And then I was done. And I made it. And I did it. This win, this stupid, silly little story was a win for me. And it doesn't matter if it's a win for someone else or if it's dumb or whatever. But it was a win for me. And knowing that I had this win and it's a win for me and it doesn't matter to anyone else, that will take me so far when I am challenged next week or next month or next year, because I have this practice of getting through a hard, difficult time under my belt now and showing up for me in a whole new way. No one was talking me off the ledge. Those two workers, those poor two workers helping me do this. They were like, you got, you could do this. Just close your eyes. And I'm like, you close your eyes. <laughs> you know, and I had to show up for me. I had to do the work and I did it. How can you show up for you? How can you do the work? How can you provide yourself a small win today that will take you so far tomorrow? Because that's what it's all about. Practice showing up for you. And then before you know it, the identity shift happens. So 
had to share that. I had to make sure I fit that in. I'm so proud of myself. Feel free to message me on Instagram. It's Melissa Vogel and tell me how proud you are of me too. (laughs) I just, I had to share. And I think these little podcasts, these little reminders of practicing identity shift, how important mindset is, mantras, they're just, they're great little reminders because we get so distracted in life right? We have so many things going on around us. We're hit with negativity. We're hit with plot twists. We're hit with drama. Other people come into our journey, family, friends, like people say things that get stuck to our brain, like, you know, glue, and then we got to peel it off. And just listening to something like this, being reminded of it, hearing of someone else's win. It's like, yeah, I can do that. We need that. We need these constant reminders. So I hope this podcast episode did that for you. Oh, I feel funny like talking about the MRI again, because I feel the anxiety, but At the same time, I feel good. So I'm going to ride this wind for a while now. I'm going to ride it for a while. But I'm glad I got to join you guys today. Thanks for listening. Thanks for jumping in. As always, look at the show notes. Check out the link. Get involved in our June challenge that's coming up if you're listening to this one in May. And everyone, start preparing for summer now. We will, I'll probably be doing a podcast coming up here about, you know, actual plans that you can make to help you prepare for summer. But right now, just start taking action, start showing up for you. It's the best way you can prepare for the upcoming months. All right, everyone, stay safe, stay healthy until next time. This podcast is designed to provide accurate and authoritative information in regards to the subject matter covered. This is given with the understanding that neither the host practice of the practice or the guest are providing legal, mental health, nutritional, or other professional information. If you need a professional, you should find one.